Hello everyone, welcome to the Kevin Lee Social. Thank you for tuning in. What initially began as an eight-part series interviewing entrepreneurs to share and inspire how they have successfully pivoted during COVID-19, I have decided not only to continue this series, but also to expand on the scope to understand and learn about people's craft, philosophy, the challenges they face in the industry, and their favorite failures that have helped shape them to become who they are today. By going deeper and understanding different thought leaders, businesses, and industries, the idea is to help cross-pollinate ideas applicable in your life and inspire action in this new norm we live in. I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. Today, we have Michael Chien. He is the founder of PS40 Bar, located in Sydney, Australia. It is one of the world's best bars as they landed at number 95 on the extended world's 50 best bars list in 2019. He was also voted the 2016 Australian Bartender of the Year and by Time Out Awards, the 2017 Best New Bar, 2018 Best Cocktail Bar, 2019 Hot Talent Award and 2020 Bar of the Year. I had such a great time chatting with Michael, understanding how COVID has affected his business and how they have creatively shifted and innovated in this pandemic. I hope you guys enjoy. Hey Michael, thanks for coming up. And how are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me, bro. Very excited. I know you've been super busy, so I really appreciate the time. I wanted to lead the conversation to start off with the words you've coined, Festivus Menu. Could you please share with us more about that? The Festivus Menu was something that we were operating with since January, uh, or finished up in January, and it was essentially a cocktail menu that had featured 10 different festivals all around the world. So each drink was inspired by a particular festival, like Oktoberfest, you can imagine would have had a, like a German-style beer-inspired kind of cocktail. We did a Cherry Blossom Festival cocktail, and it was just a way for us to choose a festival, get a drink designed around that, and then have it delivered to a guest kind of as that full package of drink and then inspiration of the drink or concept. And uh, based around, say, for example, Cherry Blossom, would it be visually as well as flavors based around what you would understand that festival would be around? Yeah, and obviously when you're looking at a drink, you're hoping that it kind of ties in. The Cherry Blossom one uh, was turned, I mean, everything we do at PS40 is turned a little upside down or looked at a slightly different perspective to keep things interesting. So that the red or the pink kind of color came from a like a beetroot that we centrifuged. We muck around with this toy that we got and essentially juicing or cold pressing beetroot and then spinning it really fast to get rid of a lot of the uh, particles. And that kind of made the beetroot essentially a lot cleaner, a lot less earthy and a bit more perfumed. That's where the cherry blossom kind of concept came from. So aesthetically wise, it looks like it. And then also to, to actually tie it in, we, had, we were using a cherry blossom vermouth from Mancino as well. So all linked in together. Awesome. <clears throat> I've been to your bar before. I'm a big fan of it. Hence why I was like, I need to get Michael on. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Not only are the flavors amazing, you're, the way you curate the experience. <clears throat> and clearly you have a really uh, deep passion for the craft. Where did your love for the craft begin? I started in hospitality. I think a lot of people did purely because they needed money when they were kids. So I, I started in hospitality when I was 16 working at a Wagamama, just essentially busing food. That was my first proper paid job. I think I started falling in love with it through the connections you have with people, not just customers, but also the people that you're surrounded around while you're working. So slowly fell in love with it. And I went to university for four and a half years and, and had two unfinished degrees, much to my mother's dismay. But my love of hospitality definitely overtook and I just started pursuing and, and actually giving it a shot seriously as the years went by. Yeah, well, much to your mother's dismay, you, you've <laughs> now owned one of the biggest accoladed bars in all of Sydney, which she's <laughs> out of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think if I came second, if we were like a good bar and, and didn't have any awards, I'd probably not be in the good books. Yeah. Every time you talk about your drinks, you always go into like really deep detail into it. 
And I'm always curious, how did you go about deep diving so deep into uh, such a particular subject? It's almost like a science for you. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, for me, the what we do is just really care about every single ingredient or every single um, thing that we're putting into each drink. So it's just essentially compartmentalizing every single ingredient. And then does it have a purpose? Is it good? Just asking the right questions, I think. So it's not really, we're not really trying to overcomplicate things, uh, even though it may seem like we are. I think the salted pina colada, for example, is probably the best example. So one of the drinks that we're currently running, it's just the pina colada, but it's earned a bit of a bit of fame in this bar because every single ingredient we really care about and we go about it in a very specific way. We actually haven't changed the recipe of the pina colada, but it stands. I feel like it stands uh, as a like a original PS40 drink, even though. It's a classic cocktail. Just to go a bit deeper into what you just shared, I'm curious about your thought process. So, for example, if we were to say start with the theme of a drink or this, like your take on a uh, pina colada, if you start from the drink and then you work your way backwards, how do you go through that thought process of deconstructing and then creating? There's, a, there's, no, there's no set methodology. Sometimes a drink can come from pure... I mean, it's all a personal thing. So for me, sometimes uh, some drinks are reverse engineered. You'll just think of the garnish. I mean, everything has a starting point somewhere. Some drinks can come from traditionally in cocktails. You always think about your whiskey spirit. Is there your spirit category? So let's choose whiskey, for example. And then you think what pairs really well with whiskey? What acidity am I going to have? What sweetener am I going to have? And then you almost basically have a cocktail. And then you think, okay, what glass am I going to serve it in? So that's a very traditional way of coming up with a drink and is, is pretty much the most important thing for a lot of uh, younger bartenders to learn, just that matrix in a sense. And then these days, because we've been doing it for so long, it might be something as stupid as, oh, that's a really cool garnish. And we're like, okay, cool. That's how I want my drink to look. And then you work your way back from there. So it's like, uh, drinks can come from anything really in terms of uh, inspiration and starting points. So sometimes now for me, I, I'm, I'm starting to look at more aesthetics of drinks and then try to tie in beverage. So I think aesthetics are, are quite important. And then for other things, one of our most famous drinks is Afrikola. Inspiration of that was an Irish coffee and how we could play around with that idea uh, and that sensation of hot and cold do it in our style. So I think inspiration can come from anywhere for us. And I think that's the most important thing. There's no set rule of how a lot of the drinks are constructed. Quick side note for everyone. Africola is my favorite drink at the PS40. <laughs> it is insane. If anyone hasn't already tried it, go to PS40 bar and try it. It's incredible. It will change your life, seriously. <laughs> Thanks, bro experience and since you've opened ps40 bar it's received numerous accolades and has made a huge stamp with the sydney bar scene we mentioned before at what point did you think was the pivotal scene for the ps40 bar blowing up in times in the time time out mag you've been listed 2020 bar of the year in 2019 hot talent award 2019 ranked in the world's 50 best bars 2018 best cocktail bar 2017 best new bar since you've started pretty much you've got accolades every single year I think it kind of, I don't know, like the, the strong thing for us, I think, is that we are still evolving. We're still developing what we're doing. A lot of bars open up and they're much more organized than we are. And they're like, okay, we're going to do this theme. And this is who we are as a bar. We sell these style drinks. They're kind of, I would liken us to a very prepubescent teenager. We're trying to figure out who we are. What's our identity? What are we wearing? And each year, everything's completely changing. If you looked at this place now compared to when we first opened, the only thing that pretty much remains the same is a couple, a couple of the soda taps and myself. The cocktail menu, the style of drinks has completely changed. And I think that's what kind of keeps us at the forefront of maybe some of these, the people who are choosing these awards because we're constantly adapting and, and evolving. And, and 
I guess we always seem new to it to a certain extent. But yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure. Hmm. I think that that's where I would give a lot of the credit to, to the fact that there's nothing really holding us back towards developing and, and, and hopefully getting better as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, constantly innovating and being creative year on year. Yeah, that's exactly it, bro. I should have just said that. And being a fellow hospitality in the scene, COVID has heavily affected businesses especially in CBD such as yours. And as we know here in Sydney, who knows how long the restrictions will be staying for? How have you been coping or even innovating in this time? The two things I think that we've been innovating and really making a big impact on is the takeaway and delivery scene. And then also we came up with this thing called Takeover Tuesdays at the bar. The first thing, delivery was just out of necessity to start with because the bar had to shut for two months. And we had a bar full of booze and a cool room full of food. And we were just like, okay, let's just make this happen. So I started driving around, delivering cocktails like a madman. Pretty much delivered to any address in Sydney. Wow. I went as, I went, I went as far as Mona Vale, up north, and then as far west as St. Clair. And then as far south as like the Southern Shire. So for me, I was just like, if the, <laughs> the delivery is worth it, I'll make it. So I, I got a lot of road time during those few months. And as the bar opened, we changed the way that we operated. We didn't really want to open on Tuesdays because we had such a small team. Like I lost half my team due to uh, them having to go back to their respective countries. One was one was American, one was uh, from the UK. That was quite sad. And so we cut our hours quite a bit. And I was really reluctant to open on a Tuesday in the middle of the CBD where not many people were coming back to work. Yeah. So we decided to start doing it with some friends so we've got chefs coming in who uh do a snack menu every tuesday and that's somehow turned into our busiest night of the, of the week oh. i think it's it's just one of those experiences where uh the chefs are trying to outdo each other we're trying to champion uh, younger up-and-coming chefs and they're providing pretty affordable snack slash dinner setting so a lot of our customers or guests really intrigued by this one-off offer and it's been one of my favorite shifts to work yeah well looking at your takeover tuesdays it's you got some pretty big names in there my friend <laughs> <laughs> i am lucky to have a couple of mates here and there who, who don't mind uh, jumping in the kitchen it's, it's it's profitable for them too all the all the food sales go to the chefs i mean they're doing all the hard work and it's a bit of fun for everyone like it all just started out if no one turned up we a bunch of us bartenders would eat the food and we have a bar full of booze and they can have a few drinks turns out it was something that hold on so but, but at the end of the day it's a win-win for everyone because they're here to have fun and and so is everyone else so it's a bit more of a house kind of party vibe uh but, but with a touch of professionalism on the floor yeah but isn't that sometimes the case where you don't focus on the outcome too much and you just focus on the process like oh let's have some fun if it goes well great if it doesn't go so well oh, it, it didn't yeah go. you definitely have to especially in these days, kind of take a little step back and just realize what it's meant to all be about rushing to things too much. Um, and how both of those going for you? The, I'm not sure. Are you still doing the deliveries at the moment? We just literally launched a new box. So uh, previously, they were pretty nicely presented in bottles with labels and whatnot. And I would deliver them in whatever vessel I could, as in like I, I was carrying around this tray so that when you get to the door, uh, I'm not handing and touching the bottles constantly and then giving it to someone. So there was like a little like COVID tray that I gave someone and they would give it back to me. Now we actually have it presented in a, like a custom made box for these three bottles. It's called a PS, well, the first iteration was called PS Sofa Series because you're going to be drinking on your couch during lockdown. Mm -hmm. And then now it's called the PS40 box set. Uh, of cocktails so the first box has three cocktails inspired by the end of spring and yeah just looks a little bit more polished it looks like something you probably want to give someone uh, a gift uh, or something for christmas and there's a bit more of a insight to what we do at the bar so i launched that on tuesday monday of this week so that's probably why i'm in the bar on a what is it thursday morning but that was that's pretty cool we had a lot of friends help us out with that and I'm pretty happy with the aesthetics of it. 
I'm really lucky to have Megs, who's uh, one of our bartenders, do all the labels. She's got a big design background. Yeah. And then Pete, who's the other side of PS40 as well. He he not only is a great bartender, but he knows how to set up an online shop and all that kind of jazz. So between the three of us, we have a, a good kind of working relationship. We're all, what's the saying? Aces in their places. <laughs> awesome. Keeping it all in-house. Yeah, man. Exactly. Um, so great. So these, so these packs, uh, so the cocktail packs are now available for online orders. Yeah. So they're available online. Just buy them through a shop. It's not exactly like the Uber Eats where you get your drink yeah. that day exactly, but we're aiming to get the packs to people pretty quickly depending on where you are. And yeah, the, I think I've got a hundred. So a hundred of that particular series. And then after we, we sell out of those, hopefully it'll be onto a different themed box set. Awesome. So Christmas presents, get ready, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Place some orders. Support local businesses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, as I mentioned before, I've, I've been to the bar a couple of times. One of my good friends is also a good friend of yours. I've observed you at the bar and you're such a great connector. Clearly incredible skills and knowledge in your craft. In your opinion, what elements do you think a great bar in your eyes should possess beyond a cocktail list and good service? Cocktail list and good service is, is getting you a very long, get, getting you a very far in, in the business kind of game. I think the other ones that are really important uh, and in no particular order would be probably the lighting, the music and the furniture. And that's something that I think a lot of bartenders, especially myself, struggle with sometimes because we're so busy being on the other side of the uh, stage, I guess. And imagine you're on a stage, essentially, like your experience of what people are experiencing is very different. And then every now and then sitting in the chair and experiencing it from the customer's eye is really important. Back in the day, I remember, especially in big hotels, they always get you to come in for a visit stay the night on them and then you get to see it through their eyes I think it's very important so yeah probably lighting furniture and and music is so important apart from a good cocktail list and service thanks for sharing that appreciate it as a fellow uh, hospitality owner just wanted to ask i was thinking how, how do you balance between being an owner slash operator in in, in in your business uh, it's tough on my side sometimes i'm you know just completely absorbed and spending way too much time and, and then i find myself having to pull myself back out, out again and then sometimes thinking i can't pull myself back out too much because i need to do I, I need to be there and do everything as well do you struggle with that and what are your take what's your take on that this year is pretty crazy and i definitely am working myself to the bone and i the light at the end of the tunnel is my Christmas holiday. So we're closing the bar for a couple of weeks and I'll push as hard as I can and work every single day up to then. But when I, I guess it's the same probably for everyone. I, when I'm at work, I'm going to work real hard. But when it hits my holiday, I'm going to be very holiday kind of mode. So turn off, just relax. No one's going anywhere too fast to try and make up for the, the amount of hours that I've worked over the last few months. It gets a bit easier when it's also for yourself too. So like I'm coming into work ridiculous hours but it doesn't really feel like work when it's yours and and, and, you, and you're doing it for a reason and you see uh, the reactions of people when they're enjoying what you're doing um, other ways of balancing it probably for me is um, making the most of any time off you have so like those little small windows making sure that they're actually quality times of time off rather than mismatch of like for example if you're catching up with a mate for coffee and a bunch of emails from work are coming through i'm definitely not checking that i'm, I'm making sure that, that time i have off with my friend whoever it is is 100 percent time off so more quality and then we'll work on the quantity thing next year it has been such a crazy year it, it, even from my side we've we rebranded and we did like a whole thing and I've been working so much trying to get that up and running as well. Fortunately, it seems to be working, which is great. But yeah, I won't be taking a break for Christmas or New Year's. <laughs> Man, it's always so inspiring to hear other people's story and 
even with yourself, you, you've got such a cult following as not just the PS40 brand, but as MC Michael Chiam as well. Ah, thanks, bro. And we're just reaching the tail end of the uh, podcast. So I just wanted to ask a few, just a few uh, little short questions. Like, did you prefer to read or watch movies? Which one, which of the two? As a kid, I read a lot. I can't remember the last book I read that wasn't a cookbook. So it's been a while since I've read an actual book that doesn't involve cooking. So that's a good insight into my spare time at home. You love to cook? I love to cook. And the only thing I'm reading these days is cookbooks. Yeah. And so I would definitely say movies over reading. Uh, if that's the case, which two cookbooks would you recommend? Oh, two. Which two cookbooks? Anything written by Thomas Keller is really good. I think he is a chef that has a lot of patience and uh, is very good at describing why things work so well uh, and why he does things a certain way. Thomas Keller book. And then the latest book I got was one of those uh, books from Lee Ho Fook in Melbourne. Victor is the chef there and owner. And he gives a lot of insight in that book too. I, I, I like, you know, doing things for a reason. And in, in both these uh, books, uh, they'll tell you to do something, but they'll actually explain why you're doing it and w- what great effect it has in the, the outcome. Uh, I think that's what, what really gets me. Yeah. Since you like cooking so much, do you, have you ever worked as a chef before? Or have you? No, nah, definitely not. Uh, a lot of people close to me know that if you're coming over for lunch, I expect to serve up a dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I, I try to get a few drinks into everyone before they get the food, so it tastes really good. And if you could only send one single line of SMS text to yourself five years ago, what would it be? Um, probably invest in Tesla. <laughs> 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 My friends, there's, 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 you know, you know, Boris and Sid, all they talk about is shares, bro. I have no idea what's going on. But yeah, that's not really my forte or my jam. But that's probably the one thing I'd probably tell myself. A quick side note, talking about Tesla, I, it was on a YouTube black hole last night. I couldn't sleep. And Jerry Clarkson, he was reviewing that Tesla model where the, the doors open like gold wings. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Jerry Clarkson, he's such a character when you review stuff. And there's a scene where always jump in so that he can't say anything negative about Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. And finally, my friend, how can people reach out or learn more about you and PS40 bar? Best way is to come in, sit at the bar. I'll be there. I mean, there's a magical force field around that bar top where our friendships and uh, connections are made with people, not just me. That's the best way to jump in the deep end. But I'm pretty, for the most part, accessible by any form of social media. I don't like not answering back for the mo- unless you're trying to sell me something that's a bit different. But I'm always open to help out and I've had plenty of people in my life help me out. So I always like having a little, little chat, little conversation with anyone. So yeah, uh, over, over Instagram or in person at the bar is the best way. Awesome. Your website links as well as PS40 address and your personal handle or PS40. Thanks, yeah. Sure. In the links. Again, thank you so much, my friend, for jumping on. I really do appreciate your time. It has been fun. It's like chatting. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Too easy. Um, Can't wait to uh, see the production. <laughs> awesome. And yeah, I'll catch you soon. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the show. All the links to the show notes will be available at kevinleesocial.com, spelled K-E-V-I-N-L-Y. Conversely, if you have any interviews that you'd love to recommend, please send it over to kevinleesocial at gmail.com. I'd love to connect. Thank you. Until the next episode.